A lot of talk this week about gas stoves. While some turned it into a political debate about banning gas appliances, the underlying issue is research pointing to concerning effects on our health, specifically that the air pollutants gas stoves emit can cause asthma in children. Welcome to my kitchen. We're one of the estimated 40% of American homes that uses a gas stove. And I have two small children. So when I read the recent research that found more than 12% of childhood asthma cases in the U.S. can be attributed to gas stove use, much like other parents probably, I thought, do I need to tear this thing out? Now it's important to remember that there's a lot of other things that increase the risk of developing asthma, and this is just one of those things. The chief of the Division of Pediatric Pulmonology at UH Rainbow Babies and Children's Hospital, Dr. Christy Ross, says cooking with gas can release chemicals that can irritate a child's airways, like secondhand smoke and air pollution. Is this more problematic for younger children or all children? In general, we do think that younger children are probably at increased risk whenever they breathe in something that's irritating because they breathe faster uh, and the amount of air that they breathe in relative to the size of their lungs and the rest of their body is a little bit higher than as you get older. Another thing to consider is that usually asthma develops earlier in, in childhood. And most children who are going to have asthma develop it either when they're in the preschool uh, time frame or early school age. She says it often starts with a viral infection. They're are inherited risk factors too, like a family history of asthma, eczema, and food or environmental allergies. Also where you live, Dr. Ross says Cleveland is part of the industrial Midwest, also known as the asthma belt, and we see more cases here than nationally. The prevalence of asthma has been pretty steady over the last 20 to 30 years at around 10 to 12 percent of kids um, having asthma, but those rates are higher uh, where we live. So anything we can do to help that out uh, is something that we should consider. If a new electric or induction range isn't in the budget, Dr. Ross says utilize ventilation when cooking with gas, whether that's using the fan in your range hood or opening a window. All right, and keep this in mind. The Inflation Reduction Act that was passed last year allocates funding for states to provide rebates for the purchase of new electric appliances like stoves. I reached out to the Ohio Department of Development, and they tell me our state got about $124 million for the point-of-sale rebates that should be available to you later this year. If you are looking to buy a stove without rebate, you'll need to decide between electric and induction range cooktops. Energy Star says induction is more efficient. It works by heating your cookware rather than the stovetop. But you need the right cookware. Induction only works with iron or a magnetic layer. So you can find out if yours passes the test by seeing if a magnet sticks to it. 